Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. One of the questions I get a lot is, should I get a male or a female boa constrictor as a pet? And which one is a better choice? Well, today I'm going to discuss the differences between male and female boas, and as we'll see, the differences may not be what you think they are. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors. So if you want to learn more about these amazing animals, be sure to subscribe. The first difference between males and female boa constrictors that some people think seems to exist is that there's a difference in temperament, with either the males being more docile and handleable or the females being more docile and handleable. So is this real? Well, in all of the many boa constrictors that I've interacted with, the vast, vast majority have been pretty docile. You know, they haven't bitten or been aggressive or anything like that. And there's only really a handful of animals that I've had that have been somewhat of a challenge to interact with. And I'll say that there's not really a difference between males and females based on my experience as far as the temperament. I've had a few animals, both males and females, that have been a challenge. But by far, the vast majority of both the male and female boa constrictors I've had have been really docile and mellow. So you shouldn't let the uh, gender of the boa constrictor determine your choice as far as which animal is has a better more docile temperament both males and female boa constrictors can make great pets that are docile and handleable the main difference between male and female boa constrictors is going to be their size at maturity and in general female boa constrictors are longer and heavier than males. Typically they're about a foot or two longer. However, there are many exceptions and there are many examples of females that don't get that big. And I'll show you some in a minute. But first I wanted to say that this is really primarily a consideration if you have very limited size and you're looking at getting the smallest possible boa constrictor. So you're naturally gonna wanna get a dwarf boa constrictor like this Qualkey boa or a Tarahumara boa or a Cockerkey or a few other types of these dwarf uh, boa constrictors. And the males of these dwarf boa constrictors can be as small as three and a half to four feet. So this is a male Qualkey boa. This guy's seven years old and this is pretty much his maximal size probably just under four feet. You can see he's really not a big snake at all. I mean, he's no bigger than a corn snake or a king snake, or even a large garter snake for that matter. So those of you who think a boa is a giant snake, uh, this guy should you know, show you that that's really not always the case. And so if you really have a shortage of space, you want an animal that can stay at full size in a three foot cage, you wanna probably get a male of the of a dwarf uh, boa locality like the crawl key. In contrast, this is my female crawl key boa. And this girl is about 15 years old. So, you know, so one of my older boas. And she's probably a little over five feet, maybe five and a half feet. She's really big for a dwarf boa. This is about as big as they get. This is the largest dwarf boa I've you know, ever had. Um, you can see she's appreciably larger than the male. I feed this girl large rats where the male gets small or medium rats. So this considerably larger snake than the male. I still wouldn't say that this is a giant snake or really a large snake that's gonna be hard to handle. But if you're somebody that really wants a small snake and really wants a boa constrictor, I would say to go for a male of one of the dwarf boa localities. And so, as I've pointed out many times before, I don't consider boa constrictors to be giant snakes. I consider them to be medium to large snakes. And I would say that this Qualkey dwarf boa is still a pretty small snake. So that was an adult pair of one of the smallest types of locality boas, the Qualkey dwarf boa. Now I wanna show you an adult pair of one of the largest types of locality boas. And these are uh, Guiana true red tail boas. And this is my male. This guy is a little over eight years old and he's about six feet long or so. So good size animal, of course not a giant. Um, but in general, the largest or the larger boas, the non dwarf boas, the males will be anywhere from about five to seven feet at maturity, whereas the females will be about six to nine feet. And so you can see this guy, um, as I said, he's about six feet or so, you know, not a giant, 
But if you do want to get a true red tail and you want an animal that's going to stay on the little bit on the smaller side, I would say you probably want to go for a male rather than a female. Conversely, if you want an animal that's going to get have the potential at least to get a little bit bigger, you want to get a female rather than a male. And this is my female Guiana boa. You can see she's a little bit bigger than the male. She's probably about seven, seven and a half feet. Um, she's actually one of my larger boas. And she's a little bit of a handful to handle. She's not the most docile boa, which is why I'm kind of keeping her at arm's length. But you can see she's noticeably bigger than the male, quite a bit thicker. Um, I would say that this is a large snake and probably not, you know, for a first time snake keeper. Um, probably I, I would not want to handle a snake larger than this by myself. This is about the limit of what an adult man can handle by himself. So if you're small in size, a female uh, true red tail might be a little too much snake for you. But this, you know, kind of shows you about the maximal size of most adult true red tails would be something like this female. On the other hand, there's always going to be animals that stay in the small end of their size range as adults. And this is an adult female Suriname true red tail boa. This female is about six and a half years old, which is usually around the age they reach sexual maturity and they get pretty close to their maximal size. You can see she's only about four feet long. This is about the same size as my adult female Tarahumar dwarf boas. And this female has always been on the smaller side. You know, when she was uh, you know, a couple years old, she just grew really slowly. Her growth wasn't stunted. In fact, I actually fed her a little bit more than I feed my other bows to try to get her to grow a little faster. But for some reason, she just didn't you know, grow very fast. And I don't think she's gonna get much bigger than this. Um, she probably could breed this year based on her age, but I, you know, at the earliest, I'm, I'm gonna breed her for the 2022 breeding season. But just a very small, Suriname true red tail boa and some of them are going to be on the smaller end of the spectrum In fact, I'm wondering if I could breed a line of Suriname red tails that don't get very big using this female as one of the founder animals So something to look forward to for me in the future A final consideration when it comes to picking whether you want a male or female boa to add to your collection Is what ratio do you want to maintain in your breeding group? And a lot of people, when they're first starting out, they want to get a lot of female boas. And they have this idea that they can have like five or six females and they'll just have one male, the super stud boa that they just kind of rotate from cage to cage and he gets the job done. And then, you know, four months later, out pops six beautiful, full, healthy litters. Unfortunately, that's not really the case. And a lot of male boas are not really that great of a breeder, especially the true red tails. And they really need to put all of their effort into one female in order to have the best chance of getting a healthy litter. In fact, people who've tried to split a male between two females will typically have a much higher chance of getting litters with a lot of slugs in them or you know, a litter that's completely slugs with no uh, living offspring. So you really, for your best chance of success, you're gonna use one male for every one female when you pair them up for the breeding trials. That being said, in general, you can breed a male almost every year, whereas females, you really wanna give a year off in between so they can gain more weight. So a female is gonna breed about every other year. So for that purpose, you might wanna have more, male, more females than males. And at most, you might want a ratio of two females in your breeding group for every one male. That way the male can serve as one female one year and then the other female the next year. That being said, um, it might not be good to breed males every year just because they kind of get tired and you might see your fertility rates going down if you're using the same male year after year. And the other thing to consider is you may actually want to use more than one male for each female when you're breeding them. In fact, some people will actually put two males in with one female and they find that the competition between the male of uh, the two males will make the males more likely to breed and they'll be more likely to get a healthy litter. Uh, some people will actually use a shed skin from another male 
That way they can be a little bit more sure of the parentage because when you have two males in there, you might not know who the daddy is. But if you use just a shed skin from another male, it might spur on the, uh, the uh, male that's not interested to be a little more interested in breeding with the female. Although it's not that uncommon for people to use two males with each female. Um, just to make sure that they have the best chance of having a healthy litter. So if you were to breed a male every year and female every other year, basically if you had a 50-50 ratio of males to females, you could use two males with one female one year, and then the same two males with another female the following year. Personally, I've never used two males uh, at the same time with the same female. Although I thought about doing that and you know, maybe that might improve my breeding success. Uh, you know, I've had a few cases where the male seemed to be interested, but for whatever reason he didn't get the job done. Um, you can also do something where you put a male in with a female for you know, a period of time, then you take it out, put another male in, something like that. But it might, in general, you don't want to skip on the males. You need a lot of males for breeding boas. Um, if not a 50-50 ratio, you probably want at least a third of your animals are gonna be male. So I would say that your male to female ratio should be between one male for every two females and one male for every female, based on you know, what your experience is and what, um, how you're gonna uh, set up your breeding strategy. So the take home message, don't skimp on the males. You really want to have plenty of males in your collection just to be ensure that your breeding group is gonna be successful. And uh, you know, breeders often will see people that only wanna buy females and you know, they want all the females from the litter. And you know, some, a lot of breeders won't sell uh, single females. If you want a female, you have to buy a male that goes with it. You can buy a, a single male, but not single females. So the, the moral is get plenty of males for your collection. And you know, don't think that you can just have a huge number of females and a few super stud males that you know, go from cage to cage. So those were a few considerations when you're thinking about whether to buy a male or female boa constrictor. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.